Gail, where are you from and what's your question? Hi, I'm from Boise, Idaho. And um, my question is about large sprouting large beans like pinto, uh, black beans, um, pink beans. Can that be done? I did it once. I tried it and my husband got terrible stomach pains afterwards. So I kind of never tried it again. And I wondered if they need to be handled differently, soaked longer or something. I don't know. So the process of soaking large beans will help remove the lectins, the phytic acids, and the enzyme inhibitors. But the large beans really aren't well designed to be um, eaten raw in any sort of large quantities. So you're best off in that case, if you want to eat those large beans, is to soak them, rinse them, sprout them, and then cook them in a pressure cooker um, like you would a normal bean, and you will have a healthier version of that normal bean. I will, will grow sprouts and the legume family, I'll do green peas, I'll do lentils, I will do soy, I'll do garbanzo, I'll do um, adzuki, but I won't, it never, I never go to the kidney beans and the black beans. I'll do fava beans. I like raw and sprouted, but the larger beans, the pintos, um, I do not do. And I don't recommend. Okay. Thank you. I really appreciate that information. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Good luck with your sprouting. Thank you. I do it all the time and I love it. <laughs> Phenomenal. I love hearing that. Thank you. So how does one... So it sounds like you eat a lot of sprouts as yes. part of your diet. How, do you find that filling? Does it take time to adjust to to eating sprouts? All you know, um, as a, a large part of your diet, given that it's it's mostly water. Well, it's mostly there's a lot of water, but also depending on the varietal, there could be quite a bit of soluble and insoluble fiber. They could also in like a cup of chickpeas could be 200 plus calories and 20 plus grams of protein. So you're getting a lot in them. The salad varieties, the radish, the clover, the broccoli, the alfalfa, those are very light calorically. But I think we there's something a little wrong in our brains that wants us to overeat. And, and when I think about why, Probably the best documented reference is in Dr. Lyle and Dr. Goldhammer's book, The Pleasure Trap, which says that the food systems and accessibility to food have advanced further and faster than our human bodies. So we are still operating in scarcity and in hunger mode, and we see food and we light up and we get turned on and we want to eat. And then we're almost trained to eat until we're full. And I think that is a contributing factor to most of these chronic illnesses, in particular, um, obesity and diabetes. So the essence of eating until you are satiated or not hungry is a better goal than eating um, overeating. And so I think that when you're eating healthy and you're clued in to the nutritional benefits, you will eat like, you know, think about this. Are, have you ever seen an animal in the wild that's overweight? No. So dumpster squirrel overweight. <laughs> right, right. Dumpster squirrel, exactly. Right. But animals in the wild have a mechanism in their biological makeup that even if there's an abundance of food, they won't overeat it. Like they will eat until they are satiated. And that's the problem with the 500 food scientists, food engineers operating in New Jersey, adding copious amounts of salt, oil, sugar. Um, artificial flavors, um, colors, they're attempting to exploit the human nature, which is looking for things that taste good and that are calorically dense. 
So there's a reason why you can't just eat one potato chip, right? So one pound of potatoes is about 500 calories. One pound of potato chips is 2,500 calories. And it's also carcinogenic because of the acrylamide in the high heat. So to the greatest extent, to be very aware of your eating, that you could easily, and I've done it, eat 2,000, 2,500, 3,000 calories of fresh sprouts. You can do it. And what you'll find is if you're eating food that is absent of salt, oil, and sugar, and processing, and you're eating things that are fresh and raw, that are minimally you know, hybridized, because they can go to all new levels of hybridization. So we still have to eat. But if you're eating free, um, free and clear um, produce, you will not overeat. And like that's the test for someone that's overweight and wants to get healthy. And you say, hey, eat some sprouts, eat some broccoli, eat a carrot, eat a whole bunch of carrots. Like eat so many carrots that your skin turns orange, right? So if you can fill up on unseasoned food, then you know that you're authentically hungry. Otherwise, you're eating out of a pure level of addiction, cravings, perversion. Thank you. And our next question is coming from Ariel. Please stay where you're from and ask your question. Aurelia, um, from Maryland. Um, where can you obtain sproutable uh, nigella sativa seeds or the black onion seeds? I think, the black, I think black onion seeds you can get from a true leaf market. They, they have black onion seeds. I don't have a good source um, for the first ones. Okay, so um, I know there's a whole lot of uh, I haven't eaten them in years. You used to see them in the grocery stores, but I think there's a lot of confusion because of black onion seeds. They're not the same as black cumin, right? Right. They are different, different varietal. Now, is black onion, this, so black onion is not the same as nigella sativa either though, is it? No. Okay. Okay. All righty. Thank but you. You're welcome and enjoy your sprouting. I love that you're getting into specifics. See, this is a passionate person. When they the make- only, and, and, and to be honest, it was the only sprouts that I really liked when they started getting popular in the 90s. They they taste like onions and they got the pretty black seeds and, and they're really tasty. Well, I think that for you, you're very bright and turned on. We want to shift to eating like Dr. Joel Furman um, who was very kind and wrote the forward to my book, his whole eat to live versus living to eat is such a profound statement that, you know, if you only like black onions, you have to ask, what else are you eating? Well, the and thing so- is, well, the thing is also, I have to say, I have to admit um, that a lot of times when you bought the sprouts in a the store, they threw off five the spout, sprouts and everything. And that's one re- another reason I sort of stopped eating them because I, I do have autoimmune disease in my family and I do react badly to alfalfa sprouts. Uh-huh. Well, I have to but, myself but go to broccoli sprouts. I don't know of any instances of the broccoli sprouts triggering lupus or autoimmune disease. 